Good morning, Spruce Society. Oh my gosh, you guys are the only ones that I get up early to show up for. Um, it might not be early where you are, but it's eight o'clock where I am. And I'm a stay up late at night kind of girl and sleep until like eight o'clock in the morning. So this is early for me. And I wanna change that habit because getting to bed early and, and getting up early and seizing the day is something I know makes a huge difference. So uh, many of you probably don't know who I am. Why would you? <laughs> My name is Wendy. And I don't know about this setup I have going on this morning. I have little stickies I wanna show you guys. And um, I'm not sure if it's even gonna translate well. I've been in Young Living since 2013, and I hit Royal Crown Diamond um, a handful of years ago and maintained it for about three years, and the last two years, not so much. <laughs> and that is okay, because all businesses go like this, and I am ready to get back, to, I'm ready to have my team back at that rank because obviously if my team is doing better, well, then I'm gonna do well. We have to focus on building up our people. But don't get me started on that because that is not what I'm supposed to be talking about today and I will get off topic so fast. Good morning, you guys. Um, I sound crazy because about a year ago my voice changed. I don't know if it was a COVID, um, long symptom. I'm not really sure, but my vocal cords are inflamed all the time. So I sound like a 13 year old boy in the middle of puberty. So it might crack. I'm not sick. This is just how I sound now, which is kind of silly. But anyway, I have a question for you. Would you rather have $10,000 a day for 30 days? Or would you rather have a penny a penny that is going to double the value will double each day so would you can you guys see this ten thousand dollars a day or a penny that doubled the value for 30 days is that actually coming across as backwards for you guys or can you see it i hope you guys can see it i don't know how to fix that on my screen but we'll show you guys the way that i'm seeing it so would you rather have $10,000 a day for 30 days or a penny that it's back to shoot, Sh Charlotte, I don't know how to fix that. Dang it. Would you rather have $10,000 a day for 30 days or a penny that doubled value for 30 days? Dang it, if anyone knows how to make that not be backwards, let me know. So the question is, and I'll get to it in just a second, a $10,000 a day for 30 days or a penny that doubled the value for 30 days? You guys, it's kind of a trick question because a penny that doubles its value every day for 30 days is like the eighth wonder of the world. It's compound interest and it's kind of like how this business works. I mean, not exactly, but you get the idea. So it's going to be backwards, but I'll tell you guys anyway. Okay. On the first day, you're going to have one cent. On the second day, you're going to have two cents. By day 10, you're going to have $5 and 12 cents. Oh, but wait, on the 15th of the month, you're going to have $163. By the 20th, you're going to have $5,242.88. By the 25th of the month, you're going to have $167,000. And five days later, you're going to have $5 million. That is compound interest. And that is kind of like how this business works. I mean, not exactly, but you get the picture. Okay, Charlotte says, turn your camera around, but you won't be able to see comments or yourself, but don't worry about it. Okay, I'll turn it around. Thank you, Sharla. Oh wait, now I can't see, now it's like the rest of my house. Oh no, we're just gonna go with it because I don't wanna mess things up here and waste your time. So you guys can see, you just heard the compound interest of having a penny that doubles its value every day. And that's kind of like how our business works, how we bring one person in and that person shares with two people and that person shares with two people and it just rolls because there is no way I 
would be able to know every single human, every single beating heart in my organization. I wouldn't have this organization without my people and without the, the duplication effects. Now, I have another a couple things to share with you. And if I take my camera out of this situation, it's gonna be bad. So I wanted to ask you where you are, so this is backwards, but how, where are you on this list, okay? So 48% of people 48% of people never follow up with someone after they've talked to their neighbor about lavender or whatever. 48% of people never follow up after that first engagement. 25% of people stop after the second engagement or the second contact. So someone asks you about the business or not about the business, about a product, you have a conversation about it, and then you might have one more conversation and then it stops, it goes nowhere. 25% of people stop after that second engagement. I'm gonna shut this, you guys, because it's driving me crazy. Okay, 10% of people make more than three contacts. 10% of people make more than three contacts. That isn't a high percentage. So people say, oh my gosh, well, it's only those, those rare few that make money in this business. That is not true, you guys. 10% of people don't try very hard. 10% of people make more, or sorry, 10% of the people are the ones that are making more than three contacts. That, so 90% of people just stop. That's the majority, you guys. That's the truth. Why is that? Why? Why, why don't we make more than three contacts? Like, where do you fall in this? Are you someone that never follows up, that makes two contacts and stops, or makes more than three? Really quick, I'm sorry this is backwards, you guys. 2% of sales are made on the first contact. 3% of sales are made on the second contact. It's not, that's not a very high percentage. 5% are made on the third contact. 10% are made on the fourth, and 80% of the sales are made on the fifth to 12 contact or engagement, but most people stop after the second. So ask yourself, where are you in the, in the grand scheme of how many times you contact people? How many times you have conversations? Do you stop after the second? Or are you part of that 10% that actually have a conversation after three attempts? Because as you can see, most of the cells are made the fifth through the 12th contact. You guys, that is profound to me. That makes me look at my own behavior and say, what the heck am I doing? Am I letting, I'm, now I'm moving this over here because it's gonna bug me. Am I letting, am I getting in my own way? Yeah, probably most of the time I am getting in my own way. So would you admit and be honest with yourself. Would you admit that if you were more persistent in certain areas of your life that you would get more results in those areas? Would you admit that? If you were more persistent in more areas of your life that you would get more results? Whether that be clean eating, drinking water, going to the gym, um, reading, doing self-development, whatever. Of course, of course you would. If we were more persistent in certain areas of our lives, we would get more results from them. That is a given. But it is so natural for us to overcomplicate things. We overcomplicate things. We mentally focus on like, what ifs? And we create stories in our minds about what people might think of us or um, you know, that maybe we don't have what it takes. We create these stories in our minds and our brains can't discriminate between what is fact and what is a story. And when you tell yourself a story enough times, your brain's gonna believe it because your brain's just its kind of like a dumb muscle. I mean, our brains are amazing, but it, our brains don't know what is real and what is a feeling. Okay, so I can tell right now that I'm talking too long already, so I need to get down to business. So let's talk about why we might not do it, be doing these things and then we're gonna get to what, what we can do. So we might be too concerned about what people think. So 
give me a hands up or something in, in the in the comments if you ever if you ever stop on your tracks because you're concerned about what someone is going to think yeah I do it too what are my neighbors going to think what are the people at the gym going to think um, what are Tyson's friends going to think of me whatever I mean ego can ego sucks our humility but when you check your ego at the door, what people think doesn't matter. And it's like, a, it's like a duck that has water rolling off its back. Be a duck, let it roll off your back. I remember my mom saying that to me when I was young. Like how, how, how am I gonna be like a duck and let it roll off my back? I'm not a duck, I'm not a duck. I have feelings and I'm sensitive. Okay, so you might be too concerned about what people think. And then do you have enough belief in yourself? Do you really, do you really believe that you can do this? And do you have enough belief in the products and the company? So are you, are you too concerned about what people think? Do you have enough belief in yourself? And do you have enough belief in your product and your company? So if we are too concerned about what people think, and we're not hungry enough for this business, we're not gonna do the work. We aren't. But that little voice in our head, uh, don't do that because so-and-so might think this, or they might think you're salesy, or they might think you just wanna make money off of them, or they might think this, or they might think that. That's gonna squash any success that you might have. But showing up with unbridled belief in yourself and your company is paramount to your business. It just, it just is. So if you believe in yourself and you believe in your products and you don't take action, it might be because your value isn't, isn't high enough, your value is too low. Why are you doing this? Why I'm doing it now is different than why I started. I started because it was fun. I started because I loved what, what I saw happening and I wanted to share with my friends and then I was like, oh my gosh, cool. I can make money and I don't have to worry so much at the grocery store. Oh my gosh, I just paid for my son's preschool. So why I started and why I do it now are different and shifted in nine years. But if you don't know why you're doing this and what you want, even if you do believe in yourself and you don't care what people think and you believe in the company, you're still not gonna do the work. So you have to get very, very clear on that. What do you want? Why are you doing this? If we don't have a vision and we aren't relentlessly persistent, our results will reflect that. They just will. So let's talk about what to do when we work. So we're checking our ego. We don't care what people think. We believe in ourselves. We, we believe in these products to the moon and back and we believe in this company. We know why we're doing this and it's different for each one of us. So we're gonna show up and we are gonna do the work because anything that success is on the other side of action, it just is. We can want things all day long, but anything and everything we want is on the other side of action. We can't just sit and want things and sit and just hope that things are going to happen. We have to actually take action. So I'm gonna get down to business now. You know, we all have different schedules and we all have different lives and different um, people pulling at us, different time that we can spend. And if you, if you um, watch the Success in 60 formula with Kristen Boss on just the one that she just did, on day two, she talked about spending 60 minutes a day and breaking it into, you know, 25% to connect, 25% to ask. 25% to engage and 25% to serve. So what does that even look like? What do we, what does that mean? What do we do when we sit down to work? Well, everything that we do when we're working should hit, I don't even know where my notes are, our three pillars, working on enrolling people, working on bringing people along in a lifestyle, and then duplication our leaders 
So when we're working, we have to ask ourselves, are we getting in front of new people? Are we sharing to enroll people? Is what we're doing going to enroll people? Is what we're doing going to bring people along in the lifestyle, get them on our loyalty rewards program? Because that is the bread and butter of our business. We have to constantly be bringing new people in because attrition happens, we're gonna lose people. They're gonna stop for whatever reason. People will die. I mean, that has happened in my organization. It's so sad, I hate it. So we have to be bringing new people in and loving on the ones that, and bringing people along into the loyalty program. And then we have to be duplicating those three things. So if we're not working in those three pillars, we're probably just doing busy work. We're clerking, we're checking boxes and doing things that maybe someone told us, gave us a list of things to do. And we're just checking those boxes. Like, so we feel better about ourselves that we're working. But if we're not working in those three areas, we're probably not gonna move the needle forward on our business. So what does that look like? Getting in front of people. Getting in front of people in person and getting in front of people on social media. If somebody else has another way to get in front of people, please let me know. <laughs> Those are the two that I know of. And this world is sh shifting a little bit and we're in front of people more often than we were two years ago. So amen to that, hallelujah to that. We have our connection back because that's a human need to connect with people. We need that. And I think people are still coming out of that the last two years. So thank goodness for seeing eyeballs and having contact with each other. So when you share on social media, um, I think if you were around, mm, when did it change? I can't even remember. I can't even remember when it changed, but we used to have to enroll people with a bundle, with a kit. And then it's changed to enrolling people on 100 PV or anything on our loyalty program. So back in the day, people would talk about our bundles because that's how we enroll people. So I feel like we were super focused on talking about those bundles and now we can talk about anything because anything, any product can bring a member on um, wholesale or to get the discount, the, the verbiage has changed a little bit. So I feel like some of us are like, well, I don't know what to talk about. We have 600 products. I used to talk about the PSK all the time. I used to talk about the Ningxia kit all the time, but now I can talk about anything. We can be a member with anything. So to narrow your, narrow your, narrow, I can't talk you guys, it's too early. Narrow your scope. I have a couple little um, printables that I will share with you guys. My advice to you is to pick a handful of topics or to pick a handful of products that you love, that you use every day. And if you're not using your products, you're gonna have a dang hard time talking about them. If you're not living the lifestyle, you are going to have a very difficult time getting those products in other people's hands. It just would feel inorganic, right? It wouldn't, it wouldn't feel natural. So I have this little sheet, and of course it's backwards, and it's called Moments in July, and every month I have a new one in the business principles. Products that you use daily, moments, wow moments and testimonies about them, and products that you want. Well, I would focus probably on what you use daily and your wow testimonies. Pick three products, pick five products. I would keep it to just a handful and then I would talk about them over and over and over on social media because, think about this, the other companies out there shall name nameless, <laughs> have a couple products. We have like 600, right? More than 600. They have a handful of products that they talk about over and over and over and over and they sell those. If we're talking about Zing one day and we're talking about hand soap the next day and Lavaderm after sun spray, and then we're talking about our thieves cleaner and then we're talking about this weird shake that my son made this morning. Like, what is he doing? I seriously don't know. He's constantly doing this stuff. And then we're talking about grains. And then we're talking about inner collagen. Like, you're overwhelmed. I just shared five things with you. Six things with you, I can count. What are you, how are you, what are you gonna buy? How are you gonna like fall in love and be intrigued and curious about any of these products if I'm throwing a new product at you every time you turn around? So it's really, really, really important to narrow your 
narrow your focus to just a couple products. I would say five or less. So if you get this sheet and you write down five products that you use daily and wow moments and testimonies about it, just brain dump. And it's okay to take some information out of your product groups. It's okay to see something in Spruce and talk about your friend that's having these remarkable results from the college. And if you're not seeing them in yourself yet or you haven't started it yet, I mean, I would imagine if you were talking about something, you would be using it. But anyway, it's okay to take someone else's information and share it. Um, there's lots of testimonies about a lot of things in all of our chat groups. So it's okay if you don't have 50 stories to tell about a product to use someone else's. So stories, products that you use, that is imperative. If you're passionate about something, you're going to show up and talk about it. I can't stop talking about Ningxia. I've always loved it, but I've been doing a deep dive into all of the, all of the benefits and it's helping me be very consistent with it. And I can't stop talking about it because how could I not? Like everybody needs it. So you're going to do that. And then this next sheet is where you're gonna plug in your product. So you maybe, and I probably need to modify this so there aren't 10 different spaces. So you might have Thieves Cleaner here and then Sulfurzyme here or the collagen, whatever. And then you're gonna plug in different examples of things you can share about. And I wouldn't imagine you guys, this would take more than 20 minutes to sit down and really do this. And so then you've created a blueprint for yourself to post. So when you get up in the morning, and it's chaotic for whatever reason. You're like, oh my gosh, I have to post. What am I going to post? I don't know. I'm in a bad mood. I just got into it with my spouse, my significant other, whatever. I don't really feel like going on social media, media because I'm, I'm just not feeling it. Well, if you've done your homework and you've, you have a blueprint for what to post, it's already there for you. You know, I'm going to talk about sulfurzyme and I'm going to share about the hair growth or I'm going to share about... Um, boundless energy, whatever. The point is brain dump, plug it in, and then you have a blueprint for what to post with your very, very narrow, very focused five products or more. And then to hold yourself accountable, we have this sheet. And again, I probably need to modify this because this was written for like 10 products. And I really think that, I think 10 is probably too much. I think five is probably about the most. Of course, you can talk about other things, but if you're really hitting Ningxia, diffusing, collagen, um, Endoflex, progestins, whatever it is, those people are gonna buy those things from you. And if you're talking about any different things, like they're like, oh, that's cool, gone. Oh, that's great. You know, Petra just shared that. Oh, and then she's talking about something else. Like it's, it's too much, it overstimulates people. So then to hold yourself accountable, you put your products right here your Ningxia, your sulfur slime, your inner collagen, and then you check off, boom, posted about it. Boom, posted about this one. Okay, I posted about this one again the second time. And at the end of the month, if you feel like, I don't know, discouraged, people aren't buying from you, check yourself. Or are you sharing with them? If you're not sharing with them, they're not going to buy from you. They're gonna buy from someone who is sharing. I'll guarantee that right now. If you are too worried about what other people are going to think of you when you share your products, don't worry, because somebody else who isn't afraid to talk about the products is going to sell them to your friends. It's happened to me, trust me, do it. So I will share these sheets with you. They're in a drive called Business Printables. Brain dump the things that you love, testimonies, take them from the group, then do a blueprint of things you can say about them and then this is your accountability, your product. And if you post it about it, check that off. This is your accountability to yourself, you guys. So that is something that you can do to get yourself ready to post. Showing up for your business. Um, I also have this magic list, which I feel like Janelle shared something that was even was better on Monday. And I realized that habit doesn't have two B's. I keep forgetting to change it. And he'll let you know that's not how you spell habit, right? I know. I haven't switched it. But it's so important, like Janelle said, when you're intentional about checking in with people and showing up, engaging with them. Oh my gosh, I'm talking too long. Um, <laughs> you will enroll them. The first time that I actually 
put names in these spaces and there's 20. It's like, I don't have 20 people on my, pro on my prospect list right now. I don't have 20 people. Oh my gosh, I had more than 20 people. I had to write down here and over here. And guess what? I enrolled a bunch of them. For the first time I did something like this a couple of years ago. And guess what guys, it actually works. Because when you write it down, then you're just, you're so much more intentional about it. And it, and it, I, it sounds really woo, woo I know, but when you write things down, they happen. What you track and what you write down grows. It just will trust me. So whatever methods you have of keeping you know, a list of your prospects, do it. Be focused about what you're sharing or you're probably gonna be all over the place, all over the place. All right, so when you're connecting with people, I like to run a list of my personally enrolled. So I just had my husband run this list of my, run this list, you guys, this is just way too early for me. <laughs> run a list of my personally enrolled because I am not a crazy high enroller, but I have three pages of people that I enrolled and I forget about them because I don't see them every day because I'm not face to face with them at the grocery store or they don't live in my neighborhood or they're not very active on social media. So the algorithms aren't showing them to me. This is imperative to keep track of your people. You need to be checking in with them. So running a list of your personally enrolled is key to stay on top of them because I think I'm going to remember. I don't, mm -mm. not at all. I don't remember. And then you can run lists of new members in your organization. You can run um, lists of money missers. I can put a post in here later about different reports that you can run. Um, because those, those reports are huge in keeping yourself organized. And you know, you might have two people in your organization right now, but down the road, you're going to have a lot more and it'll be harder to keep track of them. So those, those lists are, those reports in the virtual office are key to staying on top of your people. So you guys, I would like to, um, oh, let me show you one more thing. In the business principles file that I'm going to share, there's just kind of a little a little calendar here. I like Janelle said she's old school, likes to write things down. So do I. I do not. I I don't do well with apps, and I'm starting to use the Notes app on my on my phone because I'm sick of looking for things. After nine years, I'm not even kidding you. <laughs> After nine years, I started using the notes app and like, oh, here's your link. Here's your link to the inner beauty group. Here's your link to this bundle. Here's this information that people ask about all the time. I finally started putting it in my notes and I would recommend that to you right now. And I would also recommend that you have your photos and your photo albums organized. So you have like all of your starter bundles in an album and all of your like how to, how to use loyalty rewards points, how to enroll in loyalty rewards, whatever, that you have them organized in albums on your phone. Because I didn't do that. And it's, um, I don't know, when somebody asks you for something and you're at a stoplight, you can't scroll through a group and look for something. But if you have it in your album on your phone, then it's a lot easier to find. All right, I'm talking so long. This, I'm gonna make this so fast. I don't know that I can share Kristen's PDF with you guys because it was a group and I don't, I don't wanna make her mad. I don't wanna hear from Kristen Boss, but let's go through really quickly the different ways to connect, ask, nurture, and serve. And I was going to, I was going to go through these with you guys and write them down like collectively, but since it's backwards and I'm, I'm not able to figure that out, we're not gonna do that. So an hour a day. If you don't have an hour a day, do two 30 minute segments. If there's no possible way for you to find an hour or two 30 minute segments, then Kristen's like, you're just gonna have to go to bed 30 minutes late and get up 30 minutes earlier. If you want this business, you have to, you gotta drop the excuses and find the time. So connect, what does that look like? Connecting with 15 to new followers each day um, on social media. Following, following 10 to 20 people that are in your niche. And she says to send an, a, a message on Instagram or Facebook, something that is authentic to you. 
send new friend requests on Facebook. Um, there's lots of friends of friends that you know, and that is how we get in front of people. I've enrolled people because I've friend requested them. I might know them from a mom group, or I might know them from my neighborhood, or from the gym, or whatever, but I have to be friends with them because I need them to see what I'm posting. I cannot walk around with a megaphone and talk about Young Living all the time because nobody would listen to me. I would look like just one big sales pitch. Nobody would trust me, it would be gross. But if I friend request them and I'm consistently showing up in my business, they're gonna see it and they're gonna buy from me. And so I'm, I'm getting in the back door with them. But if I don't friend request them, how am I gonna get in front of them? I'm not uh, follow a niche based group on Facebook or a meetup group, engage with 15 to 20 people on social through comments, likes, and DMs. That is putting in the work. Um, and so if you are feeling like you're not getting enough action on your Facebook or your Instagram, then you have to ask yourself if you're actually like talking to people, if you're DMing, if you're liking, if you're commenting, because if you're not doing those things, then people aren't going to do it back to you. You have to, you have to give more than you receive in these social platforms. And I'm telling myself that because lately I haven't been putting in the connection work. Do you guys really want me to go through all these? Well, I just, why don't I just post these? Like I'll type them out versus sharing the PDF because I don't want to make Kristen Boss mad. But rather than me going through all of these and wasting your time, let me just type these out. I'll put them in the, the description and it'll give you guys something to consider when you sit down to do your work outside of posting about your product for the day the connecting, the asking, the nature, the, the nurture, engaging, and the serving. Because that's great. We all know what that means. But what does it actually, what does that look like in each category? And Kristen says that if you put the work in for 60 to 90 days and you're connecting for 15 minutes in each of these categories, you are going to see the results. And I know she's right. I know it. I know it's true. So I'm gonna wrap this up and I'm gonna add the business principles in here so that you can create a blueprint for your own posting, your own sharing. If you don't know what to share because we have so much goodness, <laughs> that will help you guys. And then I'm going to just type out this information in the body of the post so that I don't make Kristen mad by sharing the PDF with her. Find an hour a day, find an hour a day post about your products and do the things in these categories and you will see your results. But just to kind of circle back to the beginning of this, if you're too afraid what people think and you don't believe in yourself and you don't believe in your product, you got to figure out how to fix those things. And that's a whole nother talk. But at least if you know why you're not doing something, then you can fix it, right? Knowledge is power. So if you have to work on yourself, work on yourself and spend 10 minutes a day on, on your personal development on podcasts. And if you're questioning this company because it's been you know a year of hard, talk to your upline. Go listen to Ben Riley's talks. Figure it out because it is worth it, you guys. After nine years, I'm not going anywhere. You, I can't even imagine a situation where I would walk away from young living right now. It just won't happen. It's just not going to happen. It's worth it, you guys. It is worth it. And everything amazing is on the other side of action. Sitting around and thinking about it is great. But without action, you will not see the results. All right. I hope something has helped you. I'm really sorry I talked so long. I'll go in and edit this post right now before I forget. I hope you guys have an amazing weekend and I'm so thankful that you're all here in Spruce because together we are so much better than doing this on our own. Okay, you guys, bye.